मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकल क्लासेस बाय डॉक्टर श्रीनिधि कुमार आचार्य प्लीज डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड आल्सो प्लीज गिव योर वैल्यूबल कमेंट्स फ्रेंड्स एस यू नो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड टू टॉपिक्स दैट मीन्स टू लेक्चर्स रिगार्डिंग द ग्रह रोगास सो वी हैव सीन द बेसिक्स ऑफ ग्रह रोगास एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द ग्रह रोगा एंड एज वेल एज ग्रह चिकित्सा and we have also seen that uh, how the grahas which are mentioned in kama vritya is something different from the grahas which are mentioned in the uh, other subjects like uh, the gandharva graha devagraha etc so now in the next part we have also seen that uh, the acute presentations then chronic presentations acute and chronic presentations so whenever there is a invisible cause is there with the acute presentation most of the time it is compared with the uh, graha bhuta preta etc <coughs> anyway now we come to the basics of grahas which are mentioned in kama vritya now if you look into the classics like shushu samhita and vagbata especially and to some extent in kashav samhita then Mm, we found that graha is mentioned as grahanat uh, anyanaiti graha grahanat anyanaiti graha that means one which come to your body and attack you and cause the problem and that is called as graha grahanat iti graha now the question is if it is coming it is entering inside your body and then it is attacking and causing some problem so if it is moving means it is a movable subject okay it's a movable object that means that means it's a living thing so grahanat graha it has to come and attack you sees you so that means it is a living aspect so it's a graha is a living in uh, material okay it's not a non living matter it is a living matter so one thing is clear it's a living matter second in the classics it is told that graha is the one which cause the himsa graha is the one which cause the himsa that means the meaning of himsa is not killing here meaning of the himsa is a torturing it is the one which causes torturing so graha will go into torture your body that means it cause some discomfort it cause some pain uh, to your body when it enter inside the body so that means we know that our body opposes any material which is having opposite gunas to the body deha and dhatus deha dhatus and doshas any material if it is having opposite qualities to that of the bodily tissues and bodily doshas then naturally the body immune system will encounter it and it will have a uh, reaction against it try to prevent it actually that particular uh, the fight which is taking be between the body and the external material that itself is the responsible for presentation of the symptom or formation of the symptom so one thing is very clear it causes himsa means so there will be some fight which is going on between the body immune system and as well as the whatever the external material which is coming that means the material or grahas which are entering in the inside the body so they are having some antigenic property okay so because whenever there is an antigenic property in any material which enters inside the body body immune system naturally uh, prevent it and uh, try to remove it so in the process there will be a formation of the um, symptoms we know that suppose when we are having a sneezing or a sneezing sneezing is because of an external uh, Uh, noxious material is entering inside the body and uh, your body immune system is trying to prevent it in the process there is a sneezing or there is nasal discharge etc the symptoms are there anyway this is second point grahas are having some antigenic properties third one is it is clearly told that graha is the one which moves in the night hours nishachara okay now shushot i think mm, uh, vagbat vagbat clearly explains in the bhuta prasya adhyaya uttar tantra so they are the one which is having nishachara properties bhuta preta graha etc they are having nishacharas now what is the meaning of nishachara the word meaning of the nishachara is a one which like to move in the night hours okay or one which like the night time environment now if you see the night time environment means it is a dark area okay so that means grahas are those which always want to move or wander around the darker areas okay now probably in the darker areas uh, the temperature is less and maybe humidity is more so in total we can say grahas are those entities which like to move in the darker areas they hate the illumination and they want to reside in the low temperature high humidity areas 
another important thing which is mentioned is grahas are the one which cause the prachanna vyadis shushta says so they are the one which cause the prachanna vyadis prachanna means uh, hidden disease prachanna means it is the one which cause the hidden disease that means hidden disease means grahas after entering inside the body also their entry is not appreciated and after some some time they start exhibiting the symptoms and then only you come to know that yes uh, i have been attacked by a disease or a organism okay so now prachanna vyadi means hidden disease now if you see um, the time of the place where it is entering inside the body is totally unrecognized and when the disease formation starts symptoms presented then only you come to know that something bad has been happened so this is the meaning of prachanna vyadi so they are not exhibited next the they cause severe disorders it's called tivra tivra grahas are the one which cause a tivra roga tivra means very serious disorder that means presentation of the graha rogas when after they are entering inside so disease what they are causing so that is having high mortality and morbidity rates therefore it is called as tivra grahas are, will going to cause tivra rogas now another important thing is grahas are having a capacity to change the size and shape this is also very clearly mentioned in the ashtanga so they are the one which change their size and shape according to the requirement so, okay so as the situation demand they are in a position to change their size and shape this is one more important thing now it is very clearly told that grahas are not visible by the naked eye so they are visible only by means of jnana chakshu shastra chakshu or divya chakshu the meaning is they are not visualized by the normal visual power so whatever the human beings we are having the visual power so that visual capacity or visual power is not sufficient to recognize that particular grahas they are not visible by this particular naked eye if you want to visualize them you require some extra visual power so that has been mentioned as divya chakshu shastra chakshu or jnana chakshu you may require the knowledge of the eye okay you may require some other extraordinary power that means anything which is more than the normal visual power is required that means they are minute they are very minute that means they are microscopic so usually microscopic things are not uh, visualized by the human eye okay so we need a microscope etc uh, anything which is uh, even the cells they are microscopic we cannot visualize them by the naked eye so small so therefore even the grahas are also microscopic in nature so they are not seen by the naked eye uh, just like a microscope if you increase your visual power 10 times 40 times etc then it can be visible like jnana chakshu shastra chakshu divya chakshu another important thing which is told in the graha roga is uh, graha the treatment of graha rogas require the apta vakya that means when the graha rogas are there it is manifested now you want to treat the graha rogas the treatment is not so easy so you require some Uh, apta vakya that means previous knowledge past experience you have to make use of the past experience along with your yukti and then only you are able to treat the graha rogas because they are fastly progressive they are very dangerous morbidity and mortality rate is uh, uh, high and also chance of complications are more therefore they clearly says that you have to go for the apta vakya apta vakya in the sense either you have to take help of the textual references or you have to take the help of past experiences by the other physicians or you have to go for an expertization okay experts uh, opinion now that means that a simple uh, uh, one man's experience may not be sufficient to treat the graha roga so, so you have to take a combined opinion or an uh, expert's opinion is must now again it is told the shastra chakshu divya chakshu jnana chakshu Uh, these are the three things which can make the grahas visualize now these are some of the important points which are mentioned as far as the grahas are concerned now by looking at this particular slide <coughs> it's clear that grahas are living objects number one grahas are the one which are having antigenic property and grahas are the one which likes the dark atmosphere grahas are the one which cause a hidden disease grahas are the one which cause uh, high mortality and morbidity rate grahas are the one which are able to change their size and shape frequently according to the situation grahas are not visualized by the naked eye it requires some special visual power and grahas are the one which requires 
the expert's opinion while you are treating and uh, grahas are the one which cause affliction of both body and mind daiva vyaparsha and yukti vyaparsha both treatment has to be employed in case of graha rogas that means the affliction is almost a generalized affliction okay it's not only a localized affliction it's a, it, 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 it grahas always cause a generalized disease okay therefore there will be disease like jwara so jwara is a generalized symptom isn't it jwara of a hand jwara of legs it's not like that jwara is a one of the generalized symptom so therefore they say you have to go for daivapash chikitsa and yuktivapash that means grahas when they are afflicted it cause affliction of the body and also it cause the affliction of the mind therefore go for daivapash and yuktivapash chikitsa so this much of information we have got from this particular slide so now we have to uh, compare these grahas with the present uh, contemporary knowledge so i have explained all the qualities of the grahas as mentioned in the classics now which part can be very well compared with this particular explanation in the present era okay so now one thing is grahas are living and they are also moving okay and grahas are again they want the low temperature areas or humidity areas they are invisible but living so they are living invisible that means microscope living microscopic organisms so they are nothing but living and microscopic they are not even seen by the naked eye therefore it is mic microscopic so it can be seen by a special visual power okay now they can change their size and shape as per the situation and they cause him so that is antigenic properties there they cause the affliction of physical and psychological disorders both and uh, generalized involvement will be there and also they need aptavakya or empirical treatment many times the empirical treatment has to be followed many times we are not able to identify what is what is exactly the cause of the disease or cause of the jwara or fever etc but uh, based on the past experience so we give the same medicine okay because of the same we know that in particular this particular area this particular infection is very common so therefore we will go by for some medicines like antibodies and all and because every time uh, the culture studies it takes its own time so by that time you have to treat send the selection of the antibodies etc in that time is based on the empirical treatment past experiences so this is a similar type of uh, treatment protocol has to be followed even in case of graha rogas also so now we have to see what it may be in the present era so graha is they are invisible and living entity so when i say it is invisible and as well as living entity definitely it suggests that it is a microscopic nature it's of microscopics which is something which is not seen and that definitely it is microscopic but microscopic and living no microscopic and living okay so now we have to think about the microorganisms microorganisms it may be or it may not be now passes through the different phases of life cycle now see uh, it is told that it will going to cause himsa that means torture antigenic property now you have to see the visible entity which is my invisible entity which is microscopic in nature living and also antigenic and also antigenic probably some of the uh, microorganisms so they are micro uh, microorganisms they are antigenic in nature they are basically antigenic in all the microorganisms are not antigenic or mildly antigenic some of them are, are severely more antigenic anyway may be antigenic substances like some of the antigenic microorganisms now this is that it can be able to change their size and shape frequently yeah see microscopic organisms which are living and with the antigenic property having a quality of changing their size and shape frequently yeah this is possible for example you take ant amoeba amoeba so amoeba is known to change their size and shape according to the requirement okay or different uh, organisms like bacteria viruses they pass through the different phases Okay, you take malarial parasite, malarial parasite, trophozoite, myrozoite, gametozoites. It passes through the different stages. In the meantime, it changes its size and shape, so that is possible. So now this is microscopic living antigenic substances, which are able to change their size and shape according to the requirement. Sometimes, so uh, they pass through the egg stage, larva stage, then uh, again uh, the asexual pore stage, like that, different types. now they can be visualized by only the special light like microscope yes that's also over now 
they are also like the dark atmosphere now we know that microscopic organisms are so different types of microscopic organisms are there some of them may survive in the heat also and some of them may survive in the extreme cold also but normally talking usually the tendency is always the microscopic organisms so they they like to live in the dark atmosphere non illuminated areas okay so usually in the corners or non illuminated areas so they want to prefer they they prefer to stay there especially the humidity areas and low temperature areas and as well as the dark atmosphere so yes microscopic organisms do fulfill this criteria now whenever the microscopic infection is there suppose any infectious uh, microscopic affliction will be there microscopic organism entering into our body the most common symptom which is always presented is fever okay most common symptom always presented is fever fever is a generalized symptoms and even in the graha rogas also it is very clearly told the pura rupa of all the grahas are <coughs> satatam rodanam jwara jwara fever is the first symptom now come to the part what is that it is a antigenic substance living substance microscopic in nature can change the size and shape frequently like to stay in the dark atmosphere okay and cause a generalized reflection like fever etc uh, fever etc uh, most commonly this looks like to be in a microorganisms okay different type of microorganisms now again this is that uh, there is a prachanna vyadi now we may be knowing about incubation period incubation period means uh, it is explained for the microorganisms it is the period starting from the entry of the microorganisms inside the body to the formation of the first symptom and that is called the incubation period this incubation period is different for different uh, microorganisms okay it's starting from the days to year uh, sometime to years also months and years uh, most of the time microorganisms do follow about uh, two weeks of incubation period mostly Uh, it may be up to one month also it may be up to one year also sometime anyway every microorganism has got its own incubation period now here when they say graha rogas will going to cause the prachanna vyadi means the entry of graha roga is not identified and entry of graha roga inside the body is identified only after the presentation of the first symptom the time gap between these two incidences is called as incubation period that's all therefore they says that the grahas will going to cause the prachanna vyadi that means the grahas also fall fulfill the criteria of incubation period also fulfill the incubation period criteria now satatam rodanam jwara jwara is the first symptom now we know that in almost all the infection except the drug fever or some metabolic causes etc 99% of the cases infection means there will be fever fever is always indicators of some of sort of infection so here also they say that the graha roga the first symptom is always fever that means now it's very clear that graha rogas are somewhat somewhat or even the microorganisms are somewhat equal to that of the graha rogas okay now uh, fever is the first symptom in many of the infections now it causes both generalized and as, as well as the uh, psychological symptoms uh, the physical and psychological symptoms now we know that when there is a fever okay according to ayurveda jwara so jwara means santapa deha manasa okay so there will be santapa that is the main pratyatma lakshana of jwara and it is santapa will be there for the mana and santapa will be also there for the body the mana santapa uh, the body santapa deha santapa is explained as a hotness or fever whereas mana santapa vaichitya maratir glanim na santapa lakshana that means uh, sickness the child having some sickness aratir glani so that indicates the mana santapa lakshana so when mana and they have both are affected we have to go for the combination of dayu aparsha and itu aparsha chikitsa so therefore they claim says that in case of graha rogas we have to go for dayu aparsha and itu aparsha chikitsa both now further they says that aptavakya has to be followed that means empirical treatment should be given because identification of the graha roga is not so easy so when the cause is not identified so easily then for the time being we have to go for the empirical treatment or we have to follow the shastrokta vidhi or uh, protocol or some past experience suppose a infection is taking place in a particular area now a patient is coming to you with the fever you don't know which particular organism is responsible only you know that he is having fever but as a doctor in that particular area you know that which particular infection is more prevalent and definitely you will give the medicine according to that antibiotics according to that you don't know the cause but still you give the uh, antibiotic this is called as empirical treatment so many times even in case of graha rogas also we have to follow the empirical treatment by looking at all these aspects it's a living living thing it's the one which cause him sir 
it is causing tevra uh, rogas it is it can change their size and shape frequently it requires the uh, yoga yoga chikitsa it is microscopic in nature and antigenic in nature it follows the incubation period okay it follows the incubation period now all these things suggest very clearly that the graha bhuta preta which is mentioned in our classics okay or the microorganisms which are explained in the contemporary science is nothing but a part of the graha roga i cannot say full graha roga okay the extent of the total graha roga is very high okay vast some part of the graha rogas or graha bhuta preta etc can be compared with the present knowledge of microbiology of the present contemporary science therefore i say graha rogas are nothing but the microorganisms okay the extent of total extent of graha roga is more because it causes so many psychological problems also many things are there but to some extent the present knowledge of a microbiology can be taken as a part of graha roga not full part of graha roga okay so this is how we can take a assumption that or we can take a hypothesis that graha rogas are nothing but the contemporary science what they say microbiology it's a part of that okay so with this we conclude today's class in the next class we will see the next part of the same thank you very much